Hi, and welcome back to another thought for the week from Risky. So, Ruth, what are we getting up to today? Well, we're carrying on with our theme of journeys. And we're going to see somebody who's had the kind of journey of life that goes like that, very up and very down, very high and very low. So yeah, this guy was called Joseph and he had so many highs and so many lows. And he went on a really long journey to Egypt as well. So we're going to be finding out a bit more about him. But before we do, this reminded me of the game, play your cards right. Now, I don't know if you've ever played this. I know Rachel has, and she loves it. Um, but basically, this is a game where I'm going to show you six cards, and I'm going to reveal one to you, and you need to guess if the next one's going to be a higher number or a lower number, and see how long you can stay in the game. So are you ready? So the first card is a number three. Is the next one going to be higher or is it going to be lower? Rachel's guessing higher. Becky, yeah, higher. Is the next probability is that it will be higher. Yeah, are you yeah. ready? It is higher. So if you guessed higher, you are still in. We're on a number 10. Is the next card going to be higher or is it going to be lower? Rachel's guessing lower. Becky's guessing higher. Oh, I love it when we have a difference of opinions. What are you guys guessing in class? Are you ready? <gasps> it was oh, lower. No. So Becky, <laughs> are out, but we'll let you stay in because we're kind oh, like this. Oh, now, number you. seven, that's tricky because it's right slap bang in the middle. Is the next one going to be higher or is it going to be lower? I'm going higher. I'm sticking higher, yeah. Oh, are you ready? Hope you guys can still stay in. It is higher. Well done. Okay. Ready for the next one? Is it going to be higher or is it going to be lower? Lower, lower. What are you guys guessing in class? Lower. <laughs> it is a four. Now, the last one, we need a drum roll. Higher or lower? Ooh, what are you guessing? Higher? Higher? <gasps> oh. Is it higher or lower? Low? Oh. It could be. It could be higher or lower. So I'm going to say everybody wins because it's really the <laughs> holidays and because we're so kind. Well done, everyone. I love a game of higher and lower. And you know... Joseph had lots of times in his life where there were high points and low points. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Joseph, but Joseph was one of 12 brothers. Can you imagine having 11 brothers? I have one brother and that is more than enough, but he had 11 other brothers and his father was called Jacob. Now, Jacob had a favorite and you're not really supposed to have favourites, but Joseph was kind of his favourite son. And so much so that one day he bought him this most amazing coat full of many colours. And he loved it and he wore it. But I don't know about you, how do you think that made his brothers feel? Because they didn't get a coat. Yeah, Rachel, you'd be grumpy, would you? I would, I would be quite cross. I'd be jealous. You'd feel a bit jealous. Yeah, you'd feel yeah. jealous, Becky. I think I'd feel jealous because I'd be like, what about me? But you know, he had this beautiful coat. Now, let me tell you something else about Joseph. Joseph had lots of dreams and God had given him the gift to interpret these dreams, to kind of figure out what they meant. And one day he had a dream that there were 12 bundles of wheat, one in the middle, that every other bundle of wheat was bowing down. And he'd interpreted this dream meant that one day his 11 brothers would bow down to him. Well, can you imagine how they were feeling now? Even grumpier, because back then actually, 
if you were one of the youngest, you weren't as important as the oldest ones. So no way would the oldest brother bow down to one of the youngest. So I think they were probably feeling quite cross. But, you know, I reckon Joseph probably felt quite kind of happy and a little bit proud and a little bit kind of, oh, aren't I wonderful? I don't know. Maybe he didn't. But I reckon he was probably feeling quite at a high point now. Well, the brothers had had enough. One day they were out in the fields and Joseph had gone out to see them. And they thought, Do you know what? Let's end this now. Let's get rid of him. We'll throw him down a well. We'll tell our father, we'll get his coat and we'll tell our father that he's been killed by an animal. We've had enough of this dreamer. So that's what they did. They threw him down a well. Can you imagine? Well, it's a bit of a low point, but do you know what? It got even worse. They sold him into slavery. Along came some people walking along with their camels who had slaves who they were going to go and sell in Egypt. And the brothers said, let's sell him and at least we'll get money and get rid of him. So they sold him into slavery. And he had a journey all the way to Egypt. And the brothers went back to the father and told him that he died, that Joseph had died. They lied and told him that Joseph had died. And Jacob was absolutely devastated. He was so distraught. So what do you think? Do you think this is a high point in Joseph's life or a low point? Yeah, low point. Really low point. He'd, he'd had his family, had betrayed him. He was on the way to Egypt, which was a mega long journey. I reckon he was quite tired. He was going to be a slave. He didn't know where he was going to. But when he got to Egypt, a guy called Potiphar, who was like a governor of Egypt, bought him as a slave and he started working for Potiphar. And do you know what? He worked really hard and he did really well. And Potiphar really, really liked him and gave him lots of responsibility and gave him lots of power and gave him lots of good favour, really. So I think he'd gone from being right down low. How do you think he's feeling now? It's getting a bit higher again, isn't he? He's feeling good. Yeah. He's safe. He's with somebody who, ca who, who appreciates him and respects him. Oh, great job. Things are looking up for Joseph. Guess what? Potiphar's wife made up a lie that Joseph had done something really bad, which he hadn't done, but she lied and she told Potiphar that he'd done this awful thing. So guess what? Potiphar oh, put man. him into prison for a crime he hadn't even committed. How unfair, how unjust. How do you think he's feeling now? Really low, really, really low. Things aren't going well. He's in prison. He doesn't know how long he's going to be there for. Is God still with him, do you think? There's a verse in the Bible, isn't there? Not Joseph, but a different Joshua. that says, be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Do you think even in prison? Even in prison. Even in prison. Yeah. So I wonder what Joseph's thinking about his life right now. Do you think he's maybe thinking, what is going on? These ups and downs, these highs and lows. What's going to become of my life? Well, he was in prison. And you know, Pharaoh, the king, was having these funny dreams. Lots of funny dreams that, that were keeping him awake at night, that he couldn't quite figure out what they meant. Can you remember what I said at the start, that Joseph had had a special gift from God that he could interpret dreams? So the Pharaoh was getting more and more confused and, and worried and stressed about these cows, these dreams. And so somebody had said, oh, there's this guy in prison. He knows how to interpret dreams. Ask him. So, of course, when you're at the point when you're just so stressed and you don't know what to do, you'll do anything. So the out Joseph came out of prison and the Pharaoh told him his dream. 
And Joseph said, what this dream means is that we're going to have seven years, because there were seven cows on each side, seven years where there's going to be lots of food. And then we're going to have seven years where no food will grow. There will be a famine and we won't have enough food. Wow. Pharaoh chose to believe this. And he said, do you know what, Joseph? I'm going to put you in charge of all the land. You are going to be the one who's going to make sure there will be enough food. From prison all the way up to being in charge of the land of Egypt. And Joseph's plan to make sure that everybody had enough food was in the seven years where there was lots of food. They would take a bit each time and store it so that in the seven years where there was no food, they would have enough. Now, I told you he was going to have a high and low, but could you imagine how high and low his life was? He's now at a point where, again, he's safe, he's trusted, he's respected, and God's using him to do a really special job to keep people safe. And God's people moved to Egypt and they were safe because of this having food there. So these highs and lows that Joseph went through, well, what can we learn from them? Well, Christians believe that God was with Joseph in all the ups, the highs, and all the lows, that he was with him the whole time, just like that verse that Rachel had shared. And I also think that God had this bigger plan for Joseph, that he was going to use him to help keep people safe in the land of Egypt and also God's people to come across and live there. And you know what? I think we can also learn that, that sometimes in our lives, we're going to have really high points and really low points and probably lots of stuff in the middle. But Christians believe that just like Rachel shared in that verse, that God will be with us wherever we go, that we've got a God who remains the same. He doesn't go high and low. He's always loving, always faithful and always true. And as a Christian, that's something that that really helps me when I do go through those really difficult times in life, as well as those really good times in life. So I love the story of Joseph and the journey that he went on to Egypt and all that God did in that. But I also love that we can learn that actually God has a plan for our lives and that he will be with us. And that's something that as a Christian, I believe. So shall we just be quiet and I will say a prayer and at the end I'll say amen and if you agree you can say amen too because that's what it means um, or you can just sit quietly and be thinking about what Ruth's been sharing with us. So let's be quiet. Heavenly Father thank you for the story of Joseph that we've heard about today. Thank you that even though there were lots of down points in his life there were lots of really high points too. And thank you that in all of those ups and downs, you hadn't abandoned him, you hadn't left him, you were with him and you were helping him. And you had a plan that meant you would use him to keep the people of Egypt safe and to provide somewhere where your people, the people of Israel, could come and be safe as well. And thank you that, um, that you are the same God that you were then uh, and so that we can know that you are with us too in all of our ups and downs. Amen. Amen. And come back next time for our very last one of this school year. Have a good week. See you soon. Bye. Bye.